Hi there, and this is Hoo-Ha Sports Today. I would have preferred to start off with tennis, but the Nadal Djokovic US Open final is still in progress as we speak. So we will focus on the English Premier League and look at some of the players that have been sidelined due to a dip in performance and in most cases, as we will find out, it's because of the new kids in town. It's a case of being benched. But let's look at the league standings after how the team spread over the weekend. Manchester United's motto this season should be, what you can do, we can do better. Man City left out four goalmen Edin Dzeko but managed to hit three past Wigan to briefly lead the table. Only to have United hammer five against Bolton to top the standings once again, with Dimitar Berbatov also on the sub bench. Chelsea still look a little scruffy in a narrow 2-1 away win at Sunderland. Manager Andre Villas-Boas not even fielding Fernando Torres. And just look at Newcastle, up into fourth after holding a new look meet at Queen's Park Rangers to a scholar's draw at Loftus Road, pushing Stoke down one place, who bagged all three points at home over Liverpool. Everton and Villa shared the spoils in a scintillating to all draw. To the bottom half, uh, we'll talk about the new look QPR in a bit, but Arsenal, West Brom and Spurs picked up their first win of the campaign. Spurs new boy Emmanuel Adebayor partnered Jermaine Defoe, resulting in a goal each from the pair with Roman Pavlichenko a mere spectator from the bench, while Fulham and Blackburn settled for a draw and now reside in the bottom three. With United City, Chelsea and Spurs not even required to fill their prized possessions, what's the rest of the season going to be for them? Chelsea must be wondering what to do with their £50 million dud. There are rumours of Italian clubs being interested in him. Berber has lost out to a more youthful and hungry teammate despite being the top scorer last season. And with Adebayo scoring in his debut, Pavlichenko looks set to assume seat-warming duties, while the depth of the Man City squad allowed them to leave out a player who has scored in every game so far. Jekyll may have been rested for this week's Champions League fixture, but what, will, what role will Pavlichenko, Berbatov and Torres play is very much uncertain. However, the Spaniard is in hot soup, as featured in this article by The Independent. He was said to have mentioned that some of his very slow teammates were to be blamed for his lack of goals. In a translated version of his interview in Spanish, which the player later said he was misunderstood. Chelsea are investigating the tapes and Riyash Boas is not taking this lightly and I get the feeling that the manager is losing his patience with Torres. Anywho, on the Chelsea Facebook page, some say Torres should stop blaming others while there are those who are brutally honest of opting to dispose this expensive failure. But Michael Akinye reminds us the cycle of a striker's form, noting Rooney as a perfect example. If winning is important, then you have to go with who's on form, isn't it? A little indifferent with Liverpool though, their new signings failed to impress. In fact, the neutrals were disgusted with Charlie Adams' performance against Stoke and especially £20 million man Jordan Henderson who missed a golden opportunity in front of goal. Relived in our fans' live coverage. <laughs> Davies meantime vented his frustra frustration over some refereeing decisions. The Guardian writes that Davies questioned the standard of Premier League referees, even saying, quote, we would like to be respectful to the referees, but more important is them having respect for my club, unquote. <laughs> Meanwhile, Liverpool fans on their Facebook page say that there's no one to be blamed except themselves. That was Alan Smith's comment while Joe McCormack laments the wasteful £50 million on Andy Carroll and Jordan Henderson. Well, the Reds will travel to Spurs on Sunday where the fans will want to see a drastic improvement in their performance. Otherwise, it may prove that the sale of Raul Morales was a bad one. To QPR and the inclusion of Joey Barton, Sean Wright Phillips and Armand Traore in the transfer window gave Rangers a refreshed new look, but Newcastle were able to hold them off in a scholar's draw. But the new look extended to their appearance. New owner Tony Fernandez waved his magical creative wand and initiated probably the most unique shirt sponsorship deal in the world. Two airline companies for a single football club. Fernandez, the boss of budget airline Air Asia and recently a new shareholder of Malaysia's flagship carrier, were both brands where both brands will be featured on the kit in a multi-million pound deal. 
The Malaysia Airlines brand will be carried in their home kit, while the Air Asia sponsorship is to be featured in the away and third option jerseys. Rangers Chief Executive Philip Beard said, uh, well, we can, as expected, uh, some well-scripted PR talk. And on the fans' reaction to the new look jersey, many preferred the home kit without the sponsorship. But as Paul Whitcomb rightfully says, which Premier League club will have it without a sponsor? While the comment just above his likes the Malaysian girls in the picture. Well, you betcha. Now you can fly budget over here to see them in person. But trust me, you can't date the Malaysian girl like the one, you know, like those in the speeches if you're on a budget. And that's plenty for today. We have more for you tomorrow. Till then, thanks for logging on. But for the team and I, it's bye for now.